Welcome back to East Karana, one of the four Karana zones that we will be looking at in this episode. So, a couple things happened since the last episode. I killed a Griffon. <laughs> That's actually a very recent development. I actually went and got Yelp 2 from Rivervale, where the halflings love me, slash are apprehensive. Good enough, I'll take it. Uh, I got the money from killing some more gnolls in High Pass. I turned in those gnoll scalps. I did get footage of it. I didn't get audio. I had a brief moment where I could turn it in. I didn't have time to... I figured I could get the footage and do post-audio. I'll show that in a little bit. Show you what faction I got. Ultimately... Not that worth it. I remember the orc scalps being better than the null scalps. Null scalps, not that much experience, decent XP. Real quick post commentary on this quest. The quest was really disappointing. Number one, the dialogue was such a throwaway dialogue. It's, this guy's basically just like, hey, kill some nulls, I'll reward you. Number two, the XP sucked. I think I barely saw it move. Let's see what it does here. Yeah, I don't even see it move and that was three. So this quest sucks, I don't recommend it. Except for the faction, which is all right. I got Yelp 2, that was the only spell I was missing that I wanted. And I found out that Squire Wembley, uh, where is he? There he is, Wembley, is level 20, same as me, cool. Okay, so this level I wanna do a couple things. I want to show highlights of each of the four Karana zones. I want this level to be, about, this episode to be about the Karanas. Now I've already gotten a little more than a quarter of the level. I was gonna do a quarter of the level in each zone, each of the four Karana zones, so that it would add up to one level. I already got a little XP, mostly in high pass. And by the way, I'm sick again, which if you can hear my voice sounds a little off, that's why. Uh, just that season. Anyway, I want to do a quarter of the level in each of the Karana zones, even though I've already done a quarter. I do want to do at least two mobs in this zone, even though I have shown East Karana already. I'm not going to do the Knolls again. I'm going to show two very different mobs, including the Griffins. Now, I got to met up a little bit here. Uh, and if you want a hint about the other NPC that I want to do besides the Griffin, know that I have Endure Magic memmed. Hint, hint, wink, wink. So, the Griffins. I want to talk about the Griffins in this game. Griffins are a pivotal Karanum NPC, even though they're not in all four Karanas, which I'm going to talk about that a little bit later too. The Griffins are basically a mythical creature that are a hybrid between eagles and lions. They are in this game in a few different zones, not just the Karanas. Uh, that dark stalker comes real close to here, by the way. Earlier I was metting over there and he jumped me. Okay, I got enough mana. So, Griffins in this game come in a few different forms. The lowest level one is called a Griffon, A-W-N. Now every Griffon type will start with the same four letters, G-R-I-F-F. -F. After that, depending on how the, letter, the word ends, that will tell you a lot about what you're about to fight. So another thing to know about Griffins before I break down the four different types, there's, there, there's more than four if you count the names, and if you count the alias, then there's even more. But they are what a lot of people consider to be an undercon. And by that I mean, let's say that the Griffons are somewhere in the teens, F-A-W-N. Let's say they're between level 13 and 17, right? And okay, so let's say I pick a random one in the zone, it's level 16 and I fight it. It is probably going to hit harder, have more hit points and run faster than most level 16 mobs in this game. And that is, done on purpose. There are a few different types of NPCs throughout this game that you'll find that are the so-called undercons, meaning they're tougher than the average NPC for their level. Griffins are faster, and it's kind of weird to say faster because they, they fly, but yes, they, they run slash fly faster than most NPCs. Probably about the same speed as NPCs like these wolves that are kind of just sewed, like bears, wolves, lions, I think they all run a little bit faster. And they also hit harder for sure. Now, why is that? Why is that running like that? That's weird. Usually that means an NPC has so if they're just on their normal pathing and they run like that. Or they're aggroed and they're chasing someone. Anyway, that's one thing to know about the Griffins. The other thing to know is the last four letters. So the Griff Fawns, F-A-W-N, which I think is a play on word because isn't a fawn like a 
baby deer or something like that. I don't know if it's spelled the same way, but they could be a play on words. Um, the Griffons. Oh, there's one. They are in the teens. They're between levels. I, I think I got the level range right. Let's just be a little bit more generous. Let's say they're like level 12 to 17. Maybe even level 18 at the highest. I gotta be careful here because there's a couple NPCs that want to kill me. And I don't just mean lions. I mean squires and sirs. Okay, let me go down this way and try to dodge this dark stalker. Because no offense, dark stalker, but you're just not as interesting as a flying lion. It's kind of funny to say they're a high... Well, I guess they do have the face of an eagle. So they're between level 12 and 18, uh, to be a little generous. Then you've got the Graffinis. E-N-E -E is how they end. Those are between... They're somewhere in the 20s. I don't know the exact level range, but they're in the 20s. I don't like seeing this guy run at me. I, saw, I know already that he just runs. I just happened to have seen him running a few times. I actually calmed him earlier, which I guess better said pacified him earlier. I got to watch to make sure his health isn't dropping because that means that the squire aggroed him as well. Okay, good. You can see he's running faster than me. I'm trying to strafe a little bit here and now I'm stunned. <laughs> Graffinis are in the 20s. They're a little bit bigger too. Like, their physical model size is a bit bigger than the Griffons. Oh, I love this music. I can't get enough of it. Okay, I don't want it to run into the water, so this will be a good fighting spot. Let's use that little yelp, too. And then the highest level one is a Griffon, F-O-N, and those are 30s. There's also named versions, like Grimfeather being the most famous. Callowing, I think, is another one. And again, I'm not counting the Velius Griffons. And then there are the Griffins in the Commons, which are just, I think they're G-R-I-F-F-I-N, and they're about the same as an O-N. So they're the highest level. They are really cool NPCs. I Let's see, so he's hitting me for 34 at most. That, ow. You can, it makes an extra crunchy sound when it hits me with that 34. And I'm missing so much. I should probably be burning this guy down, not just talking so much. myself up. These things are tough, man. I mean, like, this one's blue. I don't know. Let's just say he's level 16. He is way tougher than a 16. He should start running after this nuke. So, the other thing I want to talk about before I cross the bridge over into North Karana, although I do have one more NPC I want to kill in this zone before I go to North Karana. I might come back for it if it's not up right now. It was up earlier. Come on, die. Listen to that sound, by the way. You hear that wing flapping? Oh, it's dead. Another good thing about Griffons is that they drop loot. Like earlier, I got these pages. And I think I got more coin last time. Hill Giants are the ones. Another Undercon that hits harder. Oh, I got about... Yeah, I got about the same. Hits harder and has more hit points than other NPCs this level. I don't know if Hill Giants run faster. I think they do. I saw a Hill Giant in this zone earlier, too. So this music, I thought about something with this music as I approach this bridge, and this music just perfectly captures this bridge, no matter which direction you come at this bridge. It's this music, it, it instills a sense of wonder and mysticism, and I mean, listen to this, or did, I, did it already pass? This is like a string section right now. That part was weird. That part. It's like a harp almost. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> well, it comes back. Anyway, my point is... There it is. This music perfectly captures this part of the world in EverQuest. And it's used in multiple Karanas perfectly. And I wonder if the way that they developed this game... Was it the case that they hired someone to do all the music... And then they just picked different parts around the world to put the music... Like, oh, you know, this soundtrack, it's kind of wondrous and grandiose. I think this would fit that bridge really well. Or did they show the composer the part of the game, be like, yeah, now the player comes across this big giant wooden bridge and there's like cyclopses nearby and griffins. And the composer was like, oh yeah, yeah, okay. I can, I can, I can work with that. You, you've inspired me to write something. 
I don't know. I'm just I, maybe there's been some interviews done with Brad McQuaid or whatever where they talked about it. I just find it very fascinating. Uh, just for the heck of it, I'm gonna put on my Endure Magic just in case I come across that other NPC that I wanted to show in this zone. I know I showed the Cyclops last time. I'm not gonna fight the Cyclops. I'm not ready for it. It's still red. At the end of this video, I want to talk about. Well, I'm gonna ask you a question. If you're watching this far, watch till the end, or at least watch the end, because I have a question that I want you to answer, either in the comments or I'm gonna do a poll question. It has to do with these Karana zones, because I know that these zones are a lot of people's favorites. Let's see if I can find this uh, this other NPC that I'm interested in. Another thing that I want to point out about these Karana zones is that they have a lot of the same, they share, all four zones share. So like all four zones are very different geographically and they share some of the same mobs. I mean, I say they're very different ge geographically. They have similar themes. They're all like wide open. I mean, they're called the Plains of Karana, right? Like if I do a slash who, oh, it just says he's Karana, but they're called the Plains of Karana. Eastern Plain, Western Plain. And they all have these wide open green spaces, but some of them are, they're all tweaked a little bit geographically. I mean, this is the only one for sure that has that giant ramp in it. Is this one of the bigger lines? No, it's just a regular one and I'm a gnome and everything looks big. So another interesting thing though, is that the NPCs, that's not gonna attack me, nor should that. The NPCs, they share some, but no NPC that I can think of outside of the really boring ones like, like this one, a Silver Mist Wolf, or maybe even that one, a lion, is in all four Karana zones. And I find that really interesting. So for example, there's a Cyclops down there, right? There's also Cyclopses in South Karana. There are no Cyclopses in North Karana. I don't think there are any in West Karana. Hill Giants, definitely Hill Giants in North Karana. Saw one here earlier, there's some in this zone. There are some in West Karana, they're rarer, but they do exist. They're rare in this zone too, actually. They're most common in North Karana. No hill giants in South Karana. None. How interesting. What's another good example? Oh, griffins. Let's talk about griffins. Definitely in North Karana, definitely in East Karana. No griffins in South Karana. I can't remember if they're in West Karana. I don't think there are griffins in West Karana. There's probably a few others, um, but it's just, uh, Knowles is another good example. There's Knowles in East Karana, there's Knowles in South Karana, there's no Knowles in North Karana, or I don't think there are any Knowles in West Karana. But then like in North Karana, you have the unique, is someone on me? Oh my God, that was scaring the hell out of me. Uh, I wonder what level she is. She's yellow. Okay, cool. Hey, that'll help me get around a little bit quicker. So, you have the the beetles, which are unique to North Karana. I, there might be some beetles in West Karana, but they're not the same type. And then in this zone, you have the spiders that are unique. And I'm not seeing the NPC that I want, so I might have to come back. Which is fine, because I just got so... And I've shown most of the important bits of this zone. There is another human village over here that I'm a little bit weary about going toward because <laughs> I tend to be KOS to these humans. Okay. If I come across that other NPC, I will uh, skip to it. If not, I'm going to head over to North Karana. I'm going to cross that bridge when I get to it. Literally. Okay, I, wa I, I was on my way back and I ran into this. Uh, it's a hill giant, but... You see how you can hear it from far away? You can hear the massive sound. A, it's not KOS. B, it's named. Now, is it really not KOS? I guess it's not. I mean, I'm really risking my life here by getting so close, just in case it's conning at me wrong. <gasps> That's the NPC I wanted. Yeah, so this is what a hill giant looks like. This is probably the only hill giant in the game that won't attack you. Tarble Earth Strider. I think he's for one of the epics, Druid, probably. That right there is the NPC that I wanted to fight. Um, oh, here's another cool sound that the hill giants make. Let's see if I sit here for a second. 
Okay. So that right there is an... Oh, that scared me. I wanted to hear him make a sound, but you didn't. That right there is the other NPC that I want to fight. It's called an Evil Eye. It is notoriously difficult. I don't know if I'd call it an Undercon because the only reason it's so difficult is because it's an Enchanter class, which is a rare class of NPC to find in this game. It also has a pet, which is part of it being an Enchanter, but I don't know that it actually has like more hit points or hits harder or anything like that. I mean, its spells hit hard, but that's just Enchanter spells. So, I would like to try and kill this thing on camera. Now, if you know anything about these NPCs, they have a habit in in on live that they would charm players, which is a nightmare if you're the player, because you could be charmed for a long time and you have no control over yourself when you're charmed. They're also just tough in general, so because they can de-spell you and nuke you really hard and DOT you and root you and mez you. Oh, I don't want to fight you, Gorge Hound. I'm trying to save my mana for that evil eye. Damn it, I hate when stuff like this happens. I'm sitting here trying to med. I mean, oh, I don't want to fight that Gorge Hound. I'm not here for the Gorge Hound. There is a cleric spell that you can cast. All right, let me let me try to camp this out. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. I should probably see if Root's going to break off or not. So I'm going to try to fight this evil eye. I'll come back when I'm ready. Oh, it's casting a spell right now. Uh, there is a very good chance that this thing might kill me, which is why I want to pull it to the bridge just to be safe. Although I'm, I'm a little bit worried about even trying to pull it because... By the way, I'm camping out aggro. Because if I pull it, it could charm me or mess me or something on the way running back. Could dispel my so. We'll see. I'll be back. Okay, we're back. Uh, he just hasted his pet, which <laughs> is not convenient for me. I don't even know which way the... Is that the bridge? I think that is the bridge. All right. I'm going to give this a shot. My strategy is I've got stun up. I've got holy might. This is an example of where holy might could actually be useful. And I'm just going to try and nuke this thing down. I'm debating whether or not I should try and pull it somewhere. I mean, if, if if things start getting rough, I will... I can't even really bring it to Sir Morgan because he'll want to attack me. Okay, let's just do this. Whew, please let this work. Please let this work. Okay, I'm going to start with the nuke. Oh boy, here he comes. Always casting something. What did he cast? The air crackles around you. Oh, he hit me for stun. Okay, well, I stunned him. Oh, you know what I should do? I should root his pet. Oh my god, he's casting on me. Look how creepy this thing is. Okay, he just tried to nuke me and it didn't land, which is great. That means my Endure Magic did something. These things also make disgusting sounds. It's like the sound of a juicy eyeball opening. I mean, look at how creepy this thing is. Oh, he's nuking. Oh, I got him. Okay, so I think one of the only good things about these... Well, first, I want to I wanna just... The eye rolls back into its head when it's dead. That's so cool. Okay. The good thing is, just like real enchanters, it has less hit points than a normal NPC. So it's pretty easy to nuke down. The bad news is, I mean, they pretty much only cast magic spells on you. That's why I didn't have Endure Fire or Endure Cold up. But they cast this Tash spell, which is like the opposite of Endure Magic. It actually lowers your magic resist. And it's pretty much impossible to resist. I mean, I've never heard of anything resisting Tash. Like I said last time I played an Enchanter, I don't remember anything ever resisting Tash, unless it was just like resistant to everything from a certain mileage away. And now we have my favorite music again. I don't know if this is actually my favorite song in the game. It's just perfect for this moment. Squire Wembley. Oh, wait a second. Look at that. I just realized I got Faction. Let's see if I can... I didn't even need Holy Might. Let's see if I can calm Squire Wembley. I'm not going to kill him. I do not want that faction hit. I got Clan Runny. I got worse. Okay. That's the Goblin Zone. Guardians of Vale got better. Stormguard got better. Wow. The uh, the dwarves apparently care about evil eyes in the Karanas. Hey, it worked. Perfect. And Storm Reapers got better. Okay. Well, Storm Reapers are also dwarves. Here we are, we're in North Karana, and we're on the same bridge. That's East Karana. We're done with East Karana for now. I killed the Griffin and the Evil Eye, which is what I wanted to record. I'm proud of myself. We get the same music. Now we get a bigger path. 
And this is where I think East and South Carolina have something in common. They don't feel, well, I shouldn't say that. I feel like West Carolina is definitely the biggest, but I feel like North Carolina feels really big as well. East and South, I feel like don't feel as big. East is probably the smallest. I'm just gonna stay on this path for a moment. I am curious. There's actually a named bear here that I would love to try and kill. I'm curious about a couple things. First of all, I know I'm going to be killed on site at the Druid Ring, which is not too far away. Second, I want to see how the Quenos guards are. Now, I probably should have tried to con them before I got all this faction because, I mean, I don't think I got enough faction to change my base con to them. But I do think it's possible that I'm close to improving my faction with the humans. Okay, so this is the gypsy camp. There's those beetles I was talking about. Here's more of these griffins. I mean, from this, from what I've shown so far, North Corona pretty much looks like East Corona, right? Well, we have a gypsy camp where I could turn in my light stone here, but I don't want to because I actually use it for light. I could kill another will-o'-wisp. Here's another griffon. Okay, so let's see what these guards con to me because we have a guard tower over here. This, by the way, of the four zones, I would say this is the most dangerous. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Get a fresh sow. Uh, you know what? Let me con the guard first. My sow is a little bit faster than his would be, but I still want it. Because <laughs> it'll be fresher. And Tash lasts about five minutes, I think. Not that it matters. I'm not going to fight any other spellcasters. Apprehensive. Okay, that's good. That's good. And just to make sure he's not a corrupt guard. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so I should be safe at this guard tower. Let me just met up here for a minute. So these guards being apprehensive to me tells me that I was not KOS to Quenos guards to begin with, because even if I have improved my faction, it would have been from threateningly to dubious if I was KOS. It wouldn't be all the way down. I have not done nearly enough work to get to apprehensive. So my guess is I started out apprehensive. Now, you might think that these guards are able to protect me from anything in this zone, right? Well, first of all, the Druids that are KOS to me, they will not help me if, if the Druids are attacking me. So the best thing to do there is to just stay away from the Druids. The other thing is, these guards, they can kill Griffons, like ONs. They cannot... And by the way, I think a Griffin, an ON, would kill one of the two guards. The other one would be able to kill the Griffin before it died, though. Then there's a named griffin that they cannot kill. If that named griffin came here, it would kill the guards. And then there's hill giants, which most hill giants are KOS. That, that named one, that last zone, was an anomaly. A hill giant would kill both these guards. I, I actually recorded footage of that for my uh, Cool Dane video. So we've got the gypsy camp there. We've got West Karana over that way. And there's a path that goes there too. There's also some more like Quino style shops over there. And this way, we have the zone line to South Karana, which kind of looks like the zone line to East Karana because it is a bridge, but it's a very different type of bridge. Now, I'm not just going to kill mobs in this zone that I already killed in the last zone, like griffins. I want to try something different. I want to try the beetles. One of the best things about these beetles is that they are slow as hell. They're like the opposite of the griffins. They're slower than the average NPC. Uh, they also have this weird, like, tiered system with that you can judge them by their name, kind of like the Griffins. I think Scythe Beetle, S-C-Y-T-H-E, is the lowest. Or, I'm sorry, the highest, the highest. I don't know what the lowest is. Oh, I thought of another NPC that's in some Corona Zones, but not all. The Trents, or some people call them Treants. I know, I know, someone's going to type in the thing. Actually, it's pronounced this Okay, well, these are all fake words that we're all pronouncing differently here. I call them trends. Just flows better <laughs> for me. There we have a wizard spire. So that and we have the same music. This might actually be where most people hear this song for the first time. So the trends, they are definitely in North Karana, the Druid Ring. They're definitely in South Karana. I don't know about West Karana, and I don't think they're in East Karana at all. So if you were a wizard and you ported the North Karana, this is exactly where you'd land. And you can actually climb up there. Oh, my, what's fading? My hit point buffs. 
I put Yelp 2 here, so I no longer have both the hit point and the armor class buff memmed at the same time. I don't think I need to recast Endure Magic. I won't be fighting any more casters. There's a monk. And we get spirit armor, so now I just have to drop this one and change it out. Which I'm fine with. The other thing that surprised me about Yelp, besides how expensive it was, is that it costs 15 mana. That's more than I thought. Like, I guess in my head, Yelp 1 costs 5 mana, and Yelp 2 costs like 10 mana. But let's see, what did Yelp cost? Yelp cost 5. Okay, so Yelp cost 5. This one just cost 3 times as much. Same cast time though, which is good. This music might actually be a little bit different, by the way. They make... I, I've been going through a lot of the soundtrack. Sometimes they make very minor tweaks between songs that are hard to notice. Unless you listen to them both back to back. Okay. So, I'm going to assume, in fact, the big boy is up there. Now, there is an NPC in there that I think is on the like Cleric Guild faction. So, I'm a little bit weary about that. I won't go up the stairs just in case. And I don't think he'll aggro me through the Z-axis. But... This bridge takes you to South Corona. Uh-oh. Oh, I thought that was someone coming after me. <laughs> I'm not going to go to South Corona yet. Ooh, is that a, is that a druid? Oh, I don't know what he is. He's anonymous. Which usually means he's a druid. Or a cleric. Sometimes you can tell by looking at their gear. Although I apparently can't inspect anyone. Okay. That must be a setting I need to tweak. I'll do that later. Oh, my swimming got a little bit better, too. I think I'm up to, like... Well, let's see what I'm up to. 63. Nice. 64! So, there's also an undead area in this zone that I'm curious to check out. I've never actually x X'd there on any of my characters. That would be the most efficient way for me to level here. And keeping in mind, I still have... South and West Karana to level in. This level. Haha. -ha. Showing all four Karanas. What did it say when I entered the zone? Did it say Northern Plains of Karana? That's what I thought. And when I started, when I logged back in from camping out that aggro, it said you have entered the Eastern Plains of Karana. So there, there we go. We, these are the plains. We have a little farm here. This is another theme that's consistent throughout most of the Karanas. You get these little human farmers. Humans are another NPC, by the way, that's in all four zones. So I'm not counting them because they're not like a kind of a unique exping NPC, like the griffins and trents and hill giants. But I kind of talked about in my lore video. Oh, they're threatening? Come on. I'm guessing these are on the Karana Residence faction. Lame. Talked about in my human lore video how the humans are just everywhere. Now, I thought that there was a group of like, they're called, well, what time is it? It's almost night. Well, there's nothing that happens uh, time wise in this zone that I'm aware of. Now, there might be one NPC, but it's not like the whole zone changes. So, oh, it looks like someone's killing them. There are these things called raiders. They are not from Las Vegas or Oakland. They are from the Karanos, and they're basically just bandits. If you kill them, you get pretty good faction. So I'm kind of curious to try. They're all green. I was thinking about doing the area of effect. Hiccups. Oh, she's level 20. Interesting. And her pet. That's really funny. I don't know. I, I don't want to run down there and hit it and then aggro like three more. So let's just leave that alone. Now, the undead camp is around here somewhere. In fact, I think that's it right there. And the druid ring is also around here somewhere. Aha! There's a druid ring and there's a Trent. And he is threateningly. And trust me, he would kick my behind because he's a spellcaster. He's a druid. Whew! You do not want to mess with those unless you are of the appropriate level. Also, if you pulled that one here, you'd get all these random... Like, there's a guild master over there. Brianna Tree Whisperer, I think is her name. Uh, I bet you I could get so from someone over there. Anyway, look at this. Undead. Okay, so we got a skeleton. That's green. Zombie. That's green. 
ghoul that's blue. Interesting. Is there anything on the other side? We got a couple more green zombies. Hmm. There is a named ghoul in this zone. I'm wondering if I'm close enough to the east Karana zone that I could, because it looks like there's only one blue here. I think if I try to pull him, he'll be the only one I get. Let me bring out my undead nuke. Where was it? Oh, there, Expulse Undead. I get a new one at 24. I actually want to do exclusively Undead next level. I already have a plan for where to go. Ha ha ha. Can't wait. But right now I'm here, and I love the Karanas. Okay, let's see if I can single pull this guy. Should be able to. Yeah, perfect. Because it's just a ghoul, I'm not too worried. I mean, they can root you. But I'm not really, I'm not going to pull it all the way to the bridge because I'm not really worried about it killing me. In fact, I probably don't even need to go this far. There's also a named bear that I mentioned earlier that drops an item that I could actually make use of. It's like a, a, a tunic that has some wisdom on it. Although this is pretty good. Hmm, might not be worth it. I forgot I was getting 10 save magic on this. That probably helped me out quite a bit with that evil eye. Oh, I forgot how how efficient my nukes are on these undeads. Oh, he just rooted me. So it used to be the case that anytime you got rooted... Oh my god, he's hitting for 36. That's hard. Oh my god. This is really strong. Come on, hit him. I don't want to waste the mana on a nuke. Uh, if you got rooted and you had so, it would take off your so. They they changed that in a patch. I don't want to say they fixed it because a lot of these things that people call fixes, they were really just modifications that the developers decided to make. I think this area is relatively safe. I don't think it's safe enough for me to like, sit here and med for a while. So let me go down to the water, which I'm quite certain is safe. Now again, on that side of the water, that is East Karana, and if you go far enough that way, like where that bridge was, that was South Karana. Okay, let me med up a little bit here. How oh, was that XP? Was that any good? Eh, not bad. Okay, I'm full mana and I've got a plan. Because there was only one NPC at this thing that was blue, I want to clear out the others to give another blue NPC a chance to spawn. But I don't want to... Why is that not showing? Okay. So I'm going to just try to <laughs> use this area of effect spell that I just got. I, I know that I showed a while ago, because these are all low level NPCs. They're like between level five and nine, I would guess. The skeleton's probably five, the zombies are around nine. Like a year ago, literally, I showed the lower version of this spell, the area of effect. Let's see how this one does. I haven't used this one yet, and I want to have a chance to show it on camera. I think the worst I can get from these things is like rabies or something. So if I kill these, they could potentially all respawn as blue ghouls. Which would be great. Okay, let's see. Let's see how this works. Ooh, that's awesome. Although, that used quite a bit of mana. I guess not that much. Um, but it didn't do as much damage as I was hoping. I was hoping it would do around 80. So, two casts brings him down to about half health. I should also turn attack on. Skeleton should be dead after this cast. Yep. And then if I can, I'd like to attack one of the other ones. Spread the joy. I also did something smart. Well, to to com combat the issue I had with the... Uh... By the way, if you're ever wondering why I just randomly will be talking and then I just stop and take a break and it's quiet, it's because, like I said, I'm sick. And it probably means I'm, I'm editing out either a cough, a nose blow, or a sneeze, which no one wants to hear. Just letting you know. Uh, so when I was fighting that ghoul, it was kicking my ass in face-to-face -face combat, but I didn't want to use the mana, although in retrospect, I should have just done it. Better safe than sorry. On, like, the full, what is it? Expulse Undead. So what I should have done was I should have memmed this spell... Ward Undead, which would allow me to 
cast an undead only super efficient nuke. I don't know how much it does. I want to say 41 at this level for a lot less mana. So that's what I should have done. Okay, let's see what we get when this uh, spire respawns. In fact, I think I'll try to get a little closer. Because if I can get four ghouls, that would really be the dream. Because none of those things gave me XP. Oh, this might be a little too close. I guess I'll just keep an eye out for anything that comes sneaking up on me. I mean, this area looks pretty desolate. Well, I say that and there's a griffin. Okay, right about here. Oh, there's a ghoul. There's a ghoul. It's green. Oh, man. I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> oh, boy. The one I'm the most worried about, by the way, is uh, West Karana. Because while there's certainly higher level NPCs, that is, on average, the lowest level of the four Karana zones. So I don't know if there will be anything really blue for me. But I'll try it. I'll see what I can find. And I, I will still get XP from this green one. Okay, let me med for a bit and come back. Okay, so I killed that greenie, and now I got my wish. I got two more ghouls that are both blue. The other side is zombies. So my strategy is going to be to try to calm one of them. And if I get both, I'm going to have to zone. Let's see. Okay. Looky, looky. Got a little lucky there. Oh, come on. Come on. The reality is I'm going to lose this so soon, too. Perfect. So calm allowed me to pull one at a time. Which is one of the reasons why I put that extra five points into charisma at the beginning of this walkthrough. It was funny to me to think about how long ago it was that I last cast that AE spell. I think it was literally a year ago, which is crazy. And I lost my so. Uh, one more should be good. Now, this other one should be single pullable just because the ones on the other side are going to be green. Don't need that. Ooh, I forgot I made that red. Very bright. I'm not ready for that next one, but I think this will be a good place that I could consistently XP for yeah, a few more minutes before I switch to another Karana zone. Let's see, if I'm trying to do a quarter each, and I already had some, so it would be less than a quarter each. I'll figure it out. All right, I should have enough for this guy. Ooh, there's another one. Green. Lame. So, I saw this guy here say he wants to buy a bind at Gypsy Camp, and he's a level 13 part, and that just kind of made me laugh because that camp is so dangerous. And I think I already said earlier, I think that this is the most dangerous of the four Karana zones. I didn't say why though so let me explain why first of all that gypsy camp particularly like i've seen hill giants just walk right through there the reason why i think this zone is the most dangerous of the four is because it has the highest propensity of griffons ons it has a named griffin that's even faster than normal griffins and higher level and it's got the highest propensity of hill giants oh my god these things just kick my ass by the way, I, I learned that when it says looks kind of dangerous, that's the like higher blue level. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I forgot that duck doesn't interrupt spellcasting yet. I think that's something they add in Belius. So, can I cast heal? Nope. This zone has the highest propensity of hill giants, griffins, and... For people like me, the Druid Rings are dangerous. Um, depending on your faction in general, the, the Quenos guards that wander around can be dangerous. There's also a bard that wanders around. But it really just comes down to the Hill Giants and the Griffins. They can just sneak up on you. I mean, I could just be sitting here and a Hill Giant or a Griffin could just wander right up. And then without so, I'm completely screwed. And if I'm low enough level, like that level 13 bard, even if he had so... His health would probably be so low after one round of hits from a hill giant that he couldn't get away. So I would say this is the most dangerous. And, oh, the other thing I want to say, when I said East Corona is probably the smallest, I'm not counting the whole ramp area because that just adds a ton of square footage. This one might actually be the smallest. I mean, this one is actually bigger than it appears because there's some empty parts of it, it's particularly in the corners. I mean, these zones are all mostly giant rectangles. West Corona is easily the biggest. In fact, that's one of the biggest zones in the game. 
Okay, back to Medic. Okay, so another update. I was looking something up in West Corona because I was kind of curious about where I could kill, and I think I found a good place to kill. Uh, and it's I, I saw that they had Trents listed in West Corona, which is news to me. And then I clicked on the the Wikipedia page for the Trents in general, and it said that they're in East Corona too. So that means they are in all four Corona zones, if that's if that's accurate. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, it kind of fits though with the theme of the. I, when I think about how each of the zones has some of these differences, like how there's no hill giants in South Karana, there's no Cyclopses in North Karana. This stuff is all on purpose. It's all part of the level design. And I think it's actually done quite brilliantly. Oh, that does 94 now. They, they wanted to come up with a way to make all four of these zones different, but also kind of the same... Like, to feel like they're all planes of the same type, but a little bit different. And, you know, you don't have to worry about hill giants in South Corona, but you do have to worry about Cyclopses and Aviax, depending on your faction. It's, it's really well done by the developers, how they did it. And the music is a little bit different. I mean, all this stuff combined, it's like, it's all part of why this game is so praised by those of us who played it both back in the day and even still for its level design and it's just game design in general it's part of the reason why there's still people like myself playing the game 20 years later and we're back and we are still in north corona however i'm about done with this zone we're gonna go south head south so i got to three orange and let me just talk about that camp a little bit Severoth, huh? That's kind of like a uh, Sephiroth. And now we're in South Corona. Oh, sounds the same. Pretty much looks the same so far. Uh, let me just talk about what that camp, what I thought about it real quick. I didn't love it. Uh, I don't think I would recommend it. It, it got annoying because the, <laughs> the ghouls weren't a guaranteed spawn. And... I had a couple times for two spawned, and then my calm didn't land, blah blah blah. 